Welcome back everyone. Hope you're having a good Saturday. As you can see, we pulled some cards there from, uh, don't want to call it our archives, but maybe just uh, storage or whatever you want to call it. So we got three packs of 1991 Pro Set. I do still have a sealed box of this, but this was from a box that I purchased at a flea market in Tennessee earlier this year. So it just has about maybe 10 or 12 packs in it. So we'll go ahead and open this here in just a second. But there you see Rick Mast and Rusty Wallace's cars on the front. Um, I know that this is Rick Mast, not Terry Labonte, because the two car did not run in 1990 under the Miller Genuine Draft Colors. 12 photo cards and uh, one Pro Set Racing Instant Win game piece included. There's that horrible black on silver uh, wrappers. There's our instant win card, which really is virtually worthless. These cards here, though, are great for TTMs. There are some folks like Bud Moore here that are deceased, but it doesn't have, it has like a semi gloss front and back, and lots of nice information on these. There you see the uh, logo there for Pro Set 1991. Of course, they did do some football cards and some other, I believe they did some Operation Desert Storm cards as well. So there you have uh, Dale Jarrett. He replaced Neil Bonnet in the 1990 season after Neil had an injury. There is kind of an insert set in the 91 and the 92 Pro set. Would be the Legend set. So this is a Legends card, Benny Parsons. And it is designated with a prefix of L. I think there's 40 cards in each set. There are some errors slash variations in this set. I don't really remember what most of those are. There's a couple that is a wrong picture. There's a couple... That's wrong information on the backside. Nothing worth really a lot of money. Really, there's nothing in 91 or 92 Pro Set that is a big, uh, big dollar card. Maybe got a couple of Dale Earnhardt cards in 92, the Jeff Gordon card in 92. I think there's a couple rookies in the 91 and 92 set. Didn't mean to glaze over Mickey Gibbs there driving for Team 3 Racing at the time. Sterling Marlin during his first year at Junior Johnson's team. There we have Leonard Jackson. He was the owner of the 33 car Harry Gant drove. Talked about Rusty Wallace earlier on the pack. Here's what the Miller Dreamman Draft Pontiac looked like in 1991. Very sharp, very clean looking car. And for all intents and purposes, was pretty fast. Won two races in 91, one race in 92, then went on tear, winning 10 races in 93 and 8 in 94. There's Alan Kowicki, who would become the 1992 Cup Series champion. Larry McClure, former owner of the number four car that was driven to several victories by Ernie Irvin and Sterling Marlin, and won by Bobby Hamilton. Jimmy Spencer, this was Travis Carter's team. His team was always plagued with financial issues, it seemed like. T. Wayne Robertson was a spokesperson for Winston Cigarettes. I believe he was killed in the mid-90s in a boating crash. And Miss Winston, Renee White, I believe she does some TTMs. I'll have to go through a couple of the websites and Facebook groups and see if she does have one. Maybe I'll send a few of the cards off to have them signed. We'll find out. We'll go to pack number two here. The King, Richard Petty. Always like profile pictures of Richard because he's got that cowboy hat and the sunglasses. It's just a very iconic look for Richard. We have uh, Jeffrey Bodine, Jeff Bodine back then, driving for Junior Johnson in the Budweiser Ford. Smokey Eunuch, this would be a legend insert, NASCAR, uh, I almost said Hall of Famer, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. So yeah, that is a legend card, Smokey Eunuch, mostly an engine builder and a car builder. I believe he raced a few races. This is Clifton Marlin, Cuckoo Marlin. This would be the father of Sterling, grandfather of Stedman Marlin. Buck Baker, we talked about him in that TG Masters of Racing set. Eddie Wood, uh, one of the Wood family, Wood Brothers Racing. Rusty Wallace, we mentioned him a few minutes ago. There's Dale Inman, the cousin of Richard Petty, and who is a longtime crew chief. Richard has seven championships as a driver. Dale has eight championships as a crew chief. Seven with Richard and one with Terry Labonte in 1984. So, uh, trivia question answered. Dale Inman has the most cup champions as a crew chief. So, here's this Lake Speed. That is Lake Speed driving the 66 car owned by Cale Yarborough. 
This uh, was a bad year for this car. They had several drivers in and out. Mark Martin. Rick Hendrick. Of course, he's current car owner for Chase Elliott. William Byron. <clears throat> Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson. And then Jimmy Finnig. I believe Jimmy still works with Roush Racing. This is when he was crew chief, I believe, for Mark Martin. No, at the time he was working for Bobby Allison, so he would have been crew chief for Hut Strickland. But he did move over to Roush eventually and has some managerial role there. So here is our third and final pack down memory lane. 1991 Max. We're going to start off with Rick Wilson. Oh, there's our game piece. I've seen the checkerboard and I was getting kind of concerned that we had some major hit back there. Uh, Rick Wilson driving for Stavola Brothers. The only driver in 1991 to run the full season and not score a top 10 finish. Ran the 1992 Daytona 500 for Stavola Brothers and was released after that race. We have Dick Hutcherson here, longtime competitor. He ran in NASCAR, he ran in USAC, he ran in a lot of different divisions, pretty successful. Talked about Hut Strickland a few minutes ago, driving for Bobby Allison. Uh, Hut was, uh, he's the, what is it, the nephew-in-law? He's he's his some relation, he's, again, nephew-in-law of Bobby Allison, because he married Bobby's niece, Pam, which was Donnie's daughter, so he's the son-in-law of Donnie, nephew-in-law of Bobby. Really weird how all that works. Bob Rahilly, former co-owner of Raymock Racing, he is the, I'll mark this out for you, Ray part of Raymock, Butch Mock, uh, would be the MOC part of Raymock. Jimmy Maycar, of course, he has a corporate position with Joe Gibbs Racing. Started there in 92 as a crew chief. I believe he was still crew chief or working with Rusty Wallace at this time. Moved to Gibbs and uh, rest is history. Sam McQuag, I believe we mentioned him in the TG uh, Legends of Racing set or Masters of Racing set earlier. Won the 19, I guess it's 66 Firecracker 400. Yeah, 1966 Firecracker 400. William Stavola, Billy Stavola, if you will, former co-owner uh, with his brother Mickey Stavola of the Stavola Brothers Racing Team. Had a few wins, uh, three wins with Bobby Allison, one win with Bobby Hill, and they just kind of struggled. They were more or less a mid-pack team. They really shined in 86 and 87. After Bobby's injury in 88, they kind of just went downhill and struggled thereafter. Ken Schrader. Got his last two cup wins all the way back in 1991. And I believe he ran his final cup race somewhere around 2007 or 8. Very long career, only four wins. Just had a lot of bad luck. We have the Raymock Oldsmobile driven by Joe Rutman. Let's see here who's in the background. You got Derek Cope right there. You got Davey Allison. And it looks like uh, Ken Schrader there behind Joe Rutman. But uh, Raymock drove, switched to Oldsmobiles in 80, or 1990 with Rick Wilson. Started driving, uh, they switched Joe Rutman in 1991. Kind of really got this wild and crazy color scheme. They had one top five, three top ten finishes in 1991. With the best finish of third in the Daytona 500. There's Linwood, I believe that's Eddie's brother. I can't remember if they're the son of Lynn or uh, Leonard or Glenn. Get, get all those Wood Boys confused a little bit. There's Kyle Petty, 1991. Had that bad crash at Talladega in the Winston 500. Broke his leg. Came back in the fall. I believe he returned in Darlington. And uh, did have one win in 1991 spring race at Rockingham. And we're going to end this little three-pack rip, rip with Ricky Rudd. 1991, he was driving for Hendrick Motorsports. There you see his uh, career in 88, 89, and 90. But Ricky was driving for Hendrick Motorsports in 1991. Scored one win at Darlington. One of three cars on the lead lap. Davy Allison was second. And Michael Waltrip was third. Ended up second in points to Dale Earnhardt. Did lead the points for a brief period of time. But had some engine failures and some crashes here and there that relegated him to second. He actually dropped to third real late in the season behind Davy Allison. But Davey had some bad luck at Phoenix and I believe in Atlanta in the final race and allowed Ricky to sneak back into second for his best career points finish ever. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk down memory lane with a three-pack rip of 1991 Max. From 1984 to about 1993, 4, 5, thereabouts, before I started really working full-time, that's going to be my uh, strong, strong area, my wheelhouse. 
of NASCAR knowledge. That's why I can rattle off all these statistics and facts, because I did a lot of reading, a lot of watching, and so forth. But anyway, as you guys are watching this video, uh, when this drops, my wife and I will probably be in Ohio. Uh, we're going to go to that uh, big antique mall in Springfield, Ohio. It's been many, many years since I've been there. She's never been, so I'm looking forward to taking her. Hopefully, we'll have a few good flea market find videos over the course of the next week or so. And then if I get a chance, hopefully on Tuesday or Wednesday or thereabouts, go to uh, Indy Card Exchange, maybe pick up another box or two of those uh, 10 cent cards. And then also got some cards coming in from Steel City, so I'm excited about that as well. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for the likes, the comments, the support, the subscriptions, etc., etc. Really do appreciate it. Uh, come back and see us tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday.